The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, Part 1 The boy's name was Santiago. Dusk was falling as the boy arrived with his herd at an abandoned church. The roof had fallen in long ago, and an enormous sycamore had grown on the spot where the sacristy had once stood. He decided to spend the night there. He saw to it that all the sheep entered through the ruined gate and then laid some planks across it to prevent the flock from wandering away during the night. There were no wolves in the region, but once an animal had strayed during the night, the boy had to spend the entire next day searching for it. He swept the floor with his jacket and lay down using the book he had just finished reading as a pillow. He told himself that he will have to start reading thicker books. They lasted longer and made more comfortable pillows. It was still dark when he awoke, and looking up, he could see the stars through the half-destroyed roof. I wanted to sleep a little longer, he thought. He had the same dream that night as a week ago, and once again he had awakened before it ended. He arose, and taking up his crook, began to awaken the sheep that still slept. He noticed that as soon as he awoke, most of his animals also began to stir. It was as if some mysterious energy bound his life to that of the sheep, with whom he had spent the past two years leading them through the countryside in search of food and water. They are so used to me that they know my schedule, he muttered. Thinking about that for a moment, he realized that it could be the other way around, that it was he who had become accustomed to their schedule. But there were certain of them who took a bit longer to awaken. The boy prodded them one by one with his crook, calling each by name. He had always believed that the sheep were able to understand what he said. So there were times when he read them parts of his books that had made an impression on him, or when he would tell them of the loneliness or the happiness of the shepherd in the fields. Sometimes he would comment to them on the things he had seen in the villages they passed. But for the past few days, he had spoken to them only about one thing, the girl, the daughter of the merchant who lived in the village they would reach in about four days. He had been to the village only once before. The merchant was the proprietor of a dry goods shop and he always demanded that the sheep be sheared in his presence so that he wouldn't be cheated. A friend had told the boy about the shop and he had taken his sheep there. I need some, I need to sell some wool, the boy told the merchant. The shop was busy and the man asked the shepherd to wait until afternoon. So the boy sat on the steps of the shop and took a book from his bag. I didn't know shepherds knew how to read, said a girl's voice behind him. The girl was typical of the region of Andalusia, with flowing black hair and eyes that vaguely recalled the Moorish conquerors. Well, usually I learn more from my sheep than from my books, he answered. During the two hours they talked, she told him she was the merchant's daughter, and they spoke of life in the village, where each day was like all others. The shepherd told her of the Andalusian countryside, and related the news from other towns that he had stopped in. It was a pleasant change from talking to his sheep. How did you learn to read? The girl asked at one point. Like everyone learns, he said, in school. Well, if you know how to read, why are you just a shepherd? The boy mumbled an answer that allowed him to avoid responding to her question. He was sure the girl would never understand. He went on telling stories about his travels and her bright, Moorish eyes went wide with fear and surprise. As the time passed, the boy found himself wishing that the day would never end and that her father would stay busy and keep him waiting for three days. 
he recognized that he was feeling something that he had never experienced before, the desire to live in one place forever. With this girl with the raven hair, his days would never be the same again. But finally the merchant appeared and asked the boy to shear four sheep. He paid for the wool and then asked the shepherd to come back next year. And now it was only four days before he would be back in that same village. He was excited and at the same time uneasy. Maybe the girl had already forgotten him. Lots of shepherds passed by selling their wool. It doesn't matter, he said to his sheep. I know other girls in other places. But his, in his heart, he knew it didn't matter. And he knew that shepherds, that like seamen and other traveling salesmen, always found a town where there was someone who could make them forget the joys of carefree wandering. The day was dawning and the shepherd urged his sheep in the direction of the sun. They never have to make any decisions, he thought. Maybe that's why they always stay close to me. The only things that concern sheep were food and water. As long as the boy knew how to find the best pastors in Andalusia, they would be his friends. Yes, their days were all the same, with seemingly endless hours between sunrise and dusk, and they never read a book in their young lives, and didn't understand when the boy told them about the sights of the cities. They were content with food and water, and in exchange, they generously gave of their wool, their company, and once in a while, their meat. If I became a monster today and decided to kill them one by one, they would become aware only after most of the flock had been slaughtered, thought the boy. They trust me and they've forgotten how to rely on their own instincts because I lead them to nourishment. The boy was surprised at his thoughts. Maybe the church with the sycamore growing from within had been haunted. It caused him to have the same dream for a second time, and it was causing him to feel anger towards his faithful companions. He drank a bit from the wine that remained in, from his dinner the night before, and he gathered the jacket closer to his body. He knew that a few hours from now, with the sun at its zenith, the heat would be so great that he will not be able to lead his flock across the fields. It was the time of day when all of Spain slept during the summer. The heat lasted until nightfall, and all that time he had to carry his jacket. But when he thought to complain about the burden of its weight, he remembered that because he had his jacket, he had with withstood the cold of the dawn. We have to be prepared for change, he thought, and he was grateful for the jacket's weight and warmth. The jacket had a purpose, and so did the boy. His purpose in life was to travel, and after two years of walking the Andalusian terrain, he knew all the cities of the region. He was planning on this visit to explain to the girl how a simple shepherd knew how to read, that he had attended a seminary until he was 16. His parents had wanted him to become a priest and thereby a source of pride for a simple farm family. They worked hard just to have food and water, like the sheep. He had studied Latin and Spanish and theology, but ever since he had been a child, he had wanted to know the world, and this was much more important to him than knowing God and learning about a man's sins. One afternoon, on a visit to his family, he had sum summoned up the courage to tell his father that he did not want to become a priest, that he wanted to travel. People from all over the world have passed through this village, son, said his father. They come in search of new things but when they leave, they are basically the same people they were when they arrived. They climb the mountain to see the castle, and they wind up thinking 
that the past was better than what we have now. They have blonde hair or dark skin, but basically they're the same as the people who live right here. But I'd like to see the castles in the towns where they live, the boys explained. Those people, when they see our land, say that they would like to live here forever, his father continued. Well, I'd like to see their land and see how they live, said the son. The people who come here have a lot of money to spend so they can afford to travel, his father said. Among us, the only ones who travel are the shepherds. Well then, I will become a shepherd. His father said no more. The next day, he gave his son a pouch that held three ancient Spanish gold coins. I found these one day in the fields. I wanted them to be part of your inheritance, but use them to buy your flock. Take to the fields, and someday you will learn that our countryside is the best and our women are the most beautiful. He gave the boy his blessing, and the boy could see in his father's gaze the desire to be able himself to travel the world, a desire that was still alive despite his father having to bury it over dozens of years under the burden of struggling for water to drink, food to eat, in the same place to sleep every night of his life.